Tired of restless nights? At Lisa, we know good sleep is essential for mental, physical, and emotional health. From memory foam mattresses to hybrids that keep you cool all night long, Lisa's mattresses offer exceptional comfort and support with free delivery and 100 nights to try out your mattress in the comfort of your home. For a limited time, save up to $700 off select mattresses plus two free pillows. Go to lisa.com slash iHeart for an additional $50 off mattresses and select goods. Exclusions apply. See lisa.com for more details. Get in zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? I got to change the oil in my car. Right now, get five quarts of Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic with an STP Extended Life Oil Filter for only $36.99. What do I do with my old oil? We can recycle your used oil for free. And do you have oil for my old work truck? You can find the right high mileage oil to help it go farther right here at AutoZone. AutoZone. Restrictions apply. It's time for a Big Blue Kickoff Live. Nobody can ever tell you that you couldn't do it because you did. On Giants.com. You know what I saw? New York Giant Prime. And the Giants mobile app. 17-14 is the final. One touchdown, we are world champions. Believe it, and it will happen. Part of the Giants Podcast Network. Let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs. Have some fun. Hello, everybody, and welcome to, what is today, Tuesday? Tuesday, yep. this is we kick off live right here on Giants.com and the Giants mobile app. John Schmelk pinch hitting for Lance Meadow today. Lance a little bit under the weather. Cytac was in from under yesterday. The weather? I'm in today. <laughs> He's under the weather? He's under the weather. He's a little person. I didn't think he can get under weather, though. <laughs> if you can get under something, <laughs> Lance is the guy to go to. Uh, Lance, I'm sorry. I feel better out there, bro. We hope he's back tomorrow. Um, when we're, I'm trying to track somebody down to talk some Michigan prospects. I'll have a little plan B if I don't get a, a return call um, shortly. But today we have a big show. We're going to talk some uh, Notre Dame prospects with Eric Hansen, who's been joining us for a long time. And then we're going to talk some Iowa prospects with uh, Tom Kakert from the uh, Hawkeye Report. So a lot coming your way today. Howard, I haven't hosted a show with you in what seems like a while. How you been, man? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? What's happening? I'm doing great. Everything's good. Kids are good. There you go. Had a feisty trip to uh, Sesame Place on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> a feisty. I love that. That's pretty funny. I have, I've been pretty – Alabama made their first Final Four. So I know. Congratulations. I'm, I'm pretty happy so right now. now officially a basketball school, right? Yeah, officially a basketball school. I like it. I appreciate it. Could, could, couldn't quite do enough. Didn't have a big man. Yeah. St- still don't have a big man. They hung, they hung as they, they hung, hung with Connecticut as well as anyone has. Though I got to. I think credit. they did a good job, uh, but the no big man thing is going to be a problem. They're, they're they're probably recruiting right now, looking at the transfer portal. I would imagine. I'm sure there's plenty of them in there <laughs> to, to find them as well. Yep. Howard's first love, you know, was Notre, is uh, Alabama, but his second love is Notre Dame because yep. he has some blood relations there. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll mind. talk about Howard Jr. But first, we're going to talk about all the Notre Dame prospects heading into the 2024 NFL Draft with. Eric Hansen, he's been joining our show for a very long time. We get him again this year, despite the fact spring practice is going on. He's carving out some time for us. He's the co-publisher of InsideNDSports.com. Eric, mm-hmm. you got John Schmelk and the big fella Howard Cross here in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Hope you're well, man. I'm doing great, and thanks for having me on. Oh, good to hear from you, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. In fact, uh, Howard Cross the third's name came up <laughs> during the Riley Leonard interview today. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> How so? He, he said, "Well, you know, Howard had the sack in the Duke game way back on September 30th, and Riley's been dealing with some ankle issues this spring, and it looks like it's moving in a great direction." But he said. Good. Every day, Howard sees him in the locker room. He says, I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I but mean, I think he's pretty happy that Howard is on the team uh, going into next year. So. Yeah, and not going against him. Yeah, I've been hearing it a lot. I feel, I'm feel i glad he's doing better because I was worried that he, you know, that ankle injury was coming back on him. But glad he's doing better. And he's looking good, I, I heard, too. Howard said he's been walking around looking like he's doing pretty good. Well, Eric, you already brought up Howard Jr., so let me start there. Uh, <laughs> he's give me, the third, ha, You know, oh, how, oh, sorry, Howard crossed I'm, the third. I'm, I'm Jr. <laughs> no, I'm My bad. <laughs> little Howard the third. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> but he is, he ain't so little anymore. <laughs> um, Eric, talk about uh, where he is. I know he could have came out this year heading into his uh, – what we think is going to be his final season at yeah, Notre Dame. This is his final season. <laughs> yeah, he he's run out of um, this. He's exercising his COVID year, and he's redshirted. So this will be his sixth year. And they had four players, including Howard, who came back that 
makes you really excited that a team that was fifth in the country in total defense last year, maybe even better this year, Riley Mills, who plays next to Howard, came back. All-America uh, safety uh, Xavier Watt. Yep. And then Jack Kaiser, um, a linebacker. 60-year linebacker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, right up the middle, you say, wow, what um, – what a great start. And then they got their uh, defensive coordinator, Al Golden, to come back as well, which was huge. So, um, and signed him to a contract extension. But Howard Cross was, I think he made second team All American in every single one of the five that count toward unanimous and consensus All American. So he just has to move up one team to get those honors. But he, he was so productive last year. And uh, what an incredible uh, thing for Notre Dame to have him decide to return. I'm sure Howard can can shed some light on what went into the decision. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it was – I mean, for all four of those guys to come back, and, and all four of them would have been drafted and will be drafted next mm-hmm. year. Well, he he really came back. As coach talked to him about you know possibly getting his master's degree and being able to you know kind of complete it uh, in his last season. And he's like, really? Like I I'm that close. And he goes, do you think I would come back and get my master's? I'm like, if you go play in the league and you have a successful career, no, you're probably not going to go back for your master's. He was like, really? Why not? I was like, you just won't be trying to go back to college. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah. He's like, well, I'm like, I'm just giving you the best advice I can give you. I said, but if you want to go, go, you know, get yourself ready for the draft. I, I will support you either way. He goes, I'd really like to get that master's. I'm like, I would really like for you to get it too. So that's what he's doing. Well, I can tell because mm-hmm. I think he misses Wednesdays. It, it conflicts with the Wednesday practices, well, which, um, yeah. You know Notre Dame's an academic school. You guys don't let people yeah. out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you gotta go to class. Yeah, that, yeah but that's during practice. Count. Yeah, no, that's not. Notre no. Dame's not Alabama now, or it's football <laughs> first, and then they schedule your classes around yeah, the football it's, practice. It's, it's, it's a little bit different. There's no like, yeah, you can go to practice today. <laughs> we'll miss this class. Like, yeah, no, you go to class. That's it. <laughs> Howard, why don't you lead us off with the uh, big top prospect coming out of Notre Dame here? Tell me about Alt. How's he? How's he been? You know, showing up. Uh, still, is he working out there? Is he off somewhere working out? At, at some of those workout places, getting ready for, for the draft, getting himself ready? Has he been around campuses all, or is he just totally into, I'm getting ready to get drafted, I'm getting ready for my, whoever I'm going to play for? He is totally into, I'm going to get drafted, and totally into, who am I going to play for? He came back for pro day, though, in, uh, I think it was March 21st was the date for that, and mm-hmm. he did work out for that, as did the other guys, but, I mean, Wow. I mean, Notre Dame has produced so many really good offensive linemen. That's true. All, all time, but certainly in this last decade or so with, you know, Zach Martin and uh, Mike McGlinchey and Quentin Nelson mm-hmm. and Ronnie Stanley. And I mean, it just goes on and on. It's like every left tackle, Liam Eikenberg, <laughs> um, and then Joe Ald is the latest and maybe the best in the lineage of left tackles. I don't know. I mean, it's it's going to be hard to hop over Zach Martin, who I think has made all pro every year as a guard um, in the in the NFL. But, um, yeah, I mean, Joe all came in as a, you know, and, and Howard can, can speak to this with his own son. Howard the third was a three-star recruit. So mm-hmm. was Joe all. And, I mean, these star systems don't always – um, get it right. They don't always know how a player's going to develop. And Joe Alt, I mean, he was starting by the middle of this freshman year and has just gotten better and better. Yeah, yeah and Eric, I want to follow. I'm sorry, can I follow up real yeah. quick? Just, and I think it's important to to note this. One of the reasons he was a three star recruit, I think, Eric, is that he wasn't an offensive tackle in high school. He did a little bit, but his dad right. wanted him to yeah. play tight end. So he comes into yeah. Notre Dame. Uh, I imagine he probably wasn't even close to 300 pounds, right? Can you talk about his development curve since mm-hmm. he's gotten there and yeah. how maybe there is still some really room for him to keep getting better since he doesn't have a ton of experience playing tackle? Yeah, he played tight end mostly in high school. He played 
played some tackle. He got to Notre Dame, and he, between his um, high school senior season and when he got to Notre Dame, he was pushing 300 by the time he got there. Wow. And, and initially, you know, the guy that they put at left tackle was also in that class was the five-star prospect who was Blake Fisher, mm-hmm. who was also in this draft, came out as a junior. They're the first two offensive linemen in Notre Dame history to come out as true juniors. Um, they've had other positions, but never offensive linemen. So wow. th- those are the first two. Um, and Blake Fisher actually started the opener, got injured against Florida State, and then there was a little bit of a revolving door. And all was a guy they were looking at as like an extra blocker and some jumbo packages. So mm-hmm. he actually kind of did line up as a jumbo tight end. And then in the middle of the season, Brian Kelly kind of went, you know what? I think this is our best option. We want to become more physical. Let's get this guy in there. And it's just been lights out ever since. Um, He's just gotten better and better. And, um, yeah, they're going to miss him next year. I'm sure uh, (laughs) Riley Leonard would have loved to have Blake Fisher and Joe Walt for next season. But you guys just keep bringing them out. You know you'll have a couple of other guys. Yeah, <laughs> you guys yeah there, there are some good ones behind them, too. I, I, Howard, you probably have seen Charles Jag as a play a little bit yep. in the Sun Bowl. True freshman who missed a lot of the season coming back from a torn PCL and had an ACL injury as well, and he ended up starting in the Sun Bowl, and he'll be the next one that we're talking about a few years from now. I want, to, I want to get to Blake Fisher in a second. Just one more thing on all real quick. How much, if at all, has he played on the right side for Notre Dame or before he got there? In practice, does he take snaps there? I know his in-game snaps are all left tackle, but you know if the Giants decide to go tackle, mm-hmm. you're not going to move Andrew Thomas off the left side, right? So he would be a guy that you would slot in at right tackle. Does he have any experience as far as, you know, in practice taking snaps on the right side, or would that be a whole new footwork change for him that he really hasn't well, done before. playing tight end, I would imagine you have some abilities. That's there. why I'm asking him the question, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, he's pretty much been a left tackle and worked there in, in those very early weeks, again, when Blake was the starter during that training camp leading up to his freshman season. He did some right tackle work, and again, he was that jumbo extra lineman and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's so athletic and so smart and such a film nut. And I think he could adjust to whatever they ask of him. Um, it would be a shame if he wasn't a left tackle, but I, I think he could play right tackle, and, and I don't think that would be a problem. I think some people, the hand placement and, and the angles and some of those things, I don't think it would be a problem for Joe Wall. He is such a technician in addition to being such a good athlete, I, I don't think it will be a problem. But but very little experience there. Absolutely. So let's talk about his running mate, Blake Fisher. How is he? How's he panning? How did he do in the you know pro day? Was he having it as good a day as he had in the season? Or was he just you know how did he shine? Let's just put it like that. Yeah, I mean Blake is super athletic. I mean obviously, I mean there's been there had never been a left tackle to start opening day as a freshman, and Blake became the first person to do that in Notre Dame history. So that shows you what they thought of his trajectory. Then he misses that whole freshman season until the bowl game, and by then Alt was established, so Blake became the right tackle. Um, I still think Blake Fisher's best football is ahead of him. Um He's a really good athlete. He's not as long as Joe. I mean, Joe is every bit 6'8", and Blake is 6'5". Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he's got a great future ahead of him. I think had he come back to Notre Dame, he would have probably been a first-rounder in the next draft. I think he'll still be a second-day pick and a pretty good value just based on his athleticism, his work ethic. And, again, he's – just coming into his own, having missed that whole freshman year. So he's got two years of playing at college. 
Howard, I know you're a big fan of Audrey Estime, so why don't you touch on what you want to do with him with, with Eric? <laughs> now, t- tell me. I, I know that they were, they were talking about his 40 time or how elusive he is. I, I, I've watched him since high school. You know, he and Howard were, yeah. were, were teammates in high school. No one really catches him from behind. They might have an angle to catch him, but no one really runs him down. So he's a big guy that gets out quick. Uh, he has good hands. People don't realize that as well. He can catch the ball. Uh, how do you see him making it in this next level? You know, there's there's something inside of Audric that propels him, and I think whatever challenge is going to be put in front of him. And, and Howard, you probably know the story. His mom passed away when I think he was ten, mm-hmm. and from sickle cell disease. And his aunt and uncle raised him. Not not married aunt and uncle, a sister and a brother of of the mom. Oh wow! Raised him in two different households. And and a lot of people would never get over that. And he uses his mom as inspiration. And, you know, he's been through a lot. And even when he was at Notre Dame his freshman year, Logan Diggs was another freshman, was ahead of him. He barely played his freshman year. Yep. And he just made himself into a thousand-yard rusher. He kind of willed himself. And if you've ever seen him modeling shirts, it's like, oh, my goodness. I mean, <laughs> Uh, he's he's a big guy. Uh, you know, that 40 time at the Combine, he, he certainly was able to knock that down some at um, the Pro Day, but y- you're right. I mean, he runs a lot faster than what the stopwatch says and, and just the power that he runs with. And he's just so much more versatile. Every year he's added to his game. Mm-hmm in terms of new skills and so forth. And he's just so driven. I see that continuing. So I really like Audric's potential at, at the NFL level. All right, let's hit a few more defensive guys here, Eric, before we say goodbye. I know you got a lot going on today, so we don't want to hold you for too long. Cam Hart, the cornerback, big kid, 6'3", over 200 pounds. Mm-hmm. I watched him down at the Senior Bowl in Mobile. I was pretty impressed where do you think he fits in best here? Is he a press man guy to you? Is he a guy that you want watching the quarterback in zone to use his length? Where do you think he's going to fit in best in a defensive scheme in the NFL? Um, I think he hit a lot of places. I mean, there's not a lot of 6'3 cornerbacks with that kind of length and that kind of speed. I mean, he's in Notre Dame scheme, he was their field um, cornerback, which... I know in the NFL it's not as much difference between corners on the sides because the hash marks are different. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he could run when there was a lot of field to cover. He could run with those guys, and he had the speed. So he can press. He can play in zone. He can do all that. I mean, with Cam, the the issue, and he came to Notre Dame as a wide receiver and they flipped him to to defense – is just staying healthy. He's had a lot of shoulder surgeries. Mm. Um, and, and if he's healthy on the pro level, you're going to see something special. He has really great physical gifts. Again, another guy that's been through a lot in his life um, and has come out the, the right side. But, you know, I think if anything holds him down in the draft, it's the medical history with all the shoulder surgeries on both shoulders. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Tell me about Leo Fowle and Baptiste, how they're going to do on the next level, linebacker and defensive end. Yeah, and Eric, uh, why don't you throw J.D. Bertrand into that too, because he's also a linebacker, so you yep. can hit on all three. Right. So Javante came from Ohio State where he was more of a niche player. He was a pass rusher for them, came in on some third downs and rotated in. And he came to Notre Dame and became a complete defensive end. From about the Ohio State game on, which was, I think, game four, Mm -hmm. he was one of the best five players on the team. And um, he just just changed the trajectory of his future by how he rounded out his game. So I I don't know that he's going to get drafted as high as, um, you know, what he would like, but I think – Again, he'll be a steal because I think his best football is still ahead of him, but he accomplished so much. Marist is a, a real difficult guy to figure out. I was convinced a couple of years ago that Marist Leofowl 
was ready to be Notre Dame's breakout star in defense. And he, he was coming off of a year where he missed the whole year with a pretty serious lower leg injury uh, that he had suffered in preseason. And he never was quite as consistent, mm-hmm. um, never quite as explosive. And even this year, he got better. So he has all the physical tools. It's whether he can put it all together at the next level. J.D. Bertrand is kind of the opposite. J.D. does everything right. He's not as um, athletic as Marist is, but he gains like half a step because he his instincts are so good. He, he just knows everything about how to play football on defense, and he's a guy a lot of people – Rode off, and I mean, I mean, again, a lot of these guys we're talking about were three-star guys come out of high school. JD was too. He's actually initially um, verbally committed to Georgia, and then ended up at Notre Dame. But um, I mean, if nothing else, he'll be a special teams player and a guy that makes a roster. Uh, but Leofal, I mean, it could go either way. He could be out of the NFL very quickly, or mm-hmm. he could be like. We always knew he was really good. <laughs> All right, Eric, final question. I always like to ask everybody because you guys are around the, the team and the program a lot closer than we are. Anyone that we're not talking about that you think we should be in terms of guys hitting the draft uh, circuit here from Notre Dame? I think we've, we've hit everybody because, again, the guys, I mean, they would have had a much bigger draft class had those four defensive players come out and none of them did uh those four extras so we'll, we'll be talking about them next year but um uh, no that's a that i think we hit on all, i mean they have a, a kicker that has a chance to to make a team just because he's got a really long leg he's got the school record for longest field goal mm-hmm. and and they have a long snapper and michael vinson who i'm sure howard's familiar with yeah who will probably make a squad, too, because he's really, really good at it. But uh, I think we've hit on all the guys that I think have a chance. There there was one guy that performed really well at Pro Day that did not get invited to the Combine, and that was Thomas Harper, who was Notre Dame's nickel. He was a, a grad transfer from Oklahoma State. I mean, he tested very well, so somebody might really like him. He did a good job in that defense as a nickel. Eric, great stuff, my friend. Uh, tell the folks anything you want to know about what you're up to. Um, I am at InsideNDSports.com. We're part of the Rivals Network, and check us out. We also have a YouTube show. We'll be on tonight from 7 to 8. We talk football live, or you can watch it any time. It's called Football Never Sleeps. <laughs> and, it, and it doesn't, Eric. Trust me. We appreciate the time, Eric. Eric Hansen, we appreciate the time, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. John and Howard, thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure, it. my friend. Eric's been joining us. He's one of our longest tenured uh, beat reporters here in, in college football. So always good to hear from Eric. What's up? I'm John Wall. And I'm CJ Toledano, and we're starting a new podcast presented by DraftKings called Point Game. Everyone, please welcome Coach John Calipari. We're getting beat by 18. My first game in Kentucky. They're saying cows are bust. You can't coach. This is crazy. John Wall runs down the floor and makes a buzzer beater. Yep. You remember that, John? That's my first game win I ever made. Remember you said you never seen me do that. Ladies and gentlemen, DeMarcus Boogie Cousins. I called Boogie. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm about to commit to Duke. And I hung up on him. <laughs> bro, I'm talking about, do you want to tell me how many times he called me all type of names? Bro, you really sold me out. You doing this. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I was sick. I remember that like yesterday, man. Love you, John Wall. Thanks, Coach. Love you, too. You made me everything I am today. Nah, you made me. You made me. I love it. Check out Point Game with John Wall and CJ Toledano on the iHeartRadio app, DraftKings YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. It wasn't even supposed to do That's my, my day. <laughs> uh, we're going to try to squeeze in some calls here, folks. We have seven minutes, so get on the line. 201-939-4513. 201-939-4513. Pearson has to go cry in his soup because he just watched the Eagles beat the Patriots in Super Bowl 52. Hi, Pearson. <laughs> Dom's going to be in for him as we take it the rest of the way. I was expecting some kind of response from him, but he, I got he nothing. Didn't, he, didn't get a, he, didn't, he didn't hit on Hartman. I thought he may have said something about Sam. Oh, uh, you know what? I guess I probably should ask about Sam. Well, I, I didn't. I, it's I, my fault. You know, I was like, do I ask about him? Do I not? He's not well, you could have. He wasn't bringing him up. I didn't want to, like, you know, 
make him have to say something he may not want to say. And look, I, I think Hartman will be a day three quarterback. He just doesn't, to me, he doesn't have a big enough arm to go on, on day two. In my day three. Oh, that's the finals. He's like seventh round. No, six, seventh no, round. I mean, it could be any, I would say, I think he could be a fifth round pick. Fifth really? or sixth. Okay. I think fifth or sixth. Interesting. It's a very shallow draft, Howard. For quarterbacks. For everybody. Okay. Like, you get, you're going to hit a point somewhere at round five, maybe early round six, where this thing falls off the cl- cliff. And the reason is because players, COVID. like your son, mm-hmm. a lot of them elected to go back for extra years for whatever personal reasons. Some are the, NIL, the, some the transfer. Lot, lot of it, a lot of it's NIL. A lot of it's, and, you know, a lot of it's right. like uh, want to get their stuff their stock up so to speak some of them are you know like i said when my son told me that he really wanted to get that master's degree i'm like dude from notre dame yeah that, that'd be good he goes like okay yeah well, that's hurt either <laughs> i'm like that's not bad <laughs> it's not bad uh everybody thanks for joining us uh let's go to um bobby in vermont we'll try to squeeze in one or two calls here bobby what's up Hey, Howard and John, how you guys doing? Very Howard, good. you're one of the best tight ends the Giants ever had. I, oh, I appreciate that. that. Thank you very much. And I think the Giants should try to get Joe Alt because we need offensive linemen instead of a stupid quarterback. Because I think we went down that road with Daniel Jones. We don't want him. And I think we the offensive linemen are better. Can I tell you a good one story about the Giants? Yeah, when, yeah, be a Bobby, real quick, uh, real quick before your story. Would you be okay if they picked a wide receiver? Oh yeah, we would talk. They talked about uh, the guy from Michigan, right? Uh, no, it would probably either be the, the guy from LSU. LSU or Washington. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ro- Ro- oh, okay. It would be yeah. Roma Dunze from Washington. Or Malik Neighbors from LSU. And, of course, the Marvin Harrison Jr. somehow gets there. I was thinking about Neighbors. Maybe Neighbors. Yeah, Yeah. Neighbors would be good, too. So what's your story, Bobby? What do you got? Okay, when we were younger, my uh, aunt and uncle took us to a restaurant in New York called uh, Bennigan's, right? (laughs) So the waitress did not know who she was sitting next to us, the hostess. So we got to the table. Guess who it was? It was Leonard Marshall of the New York Giants. Whoa. I almost, uh, my mouth went dropped. <laughs> I was so excited. I couldn't even get his autograph. My aunt had to go get the autograph from him. And he made me so happy. Uh, after dinner, we shook his hand, and he was very nice. And I met LT at his place, LT's, the bar he used to own. Yep. Yeah, how across you're awesome, and your son plays good on Notre Dame. Oh, I He's appreciate that. He's a great that. player. And, John, you do a great job on your thing. And then will you guys say hello to uh, Bob Papa for me, please? Of course. Absolutely. I met him at Giants training camp up in Albany. I used to guys go all the time in Albany. It's hard to get down to New Jersey. I live in Vermont now. So. <laughs> no, I get it. Bobby, the check's in the uh, mail, man. We appreciate the kind words. <laughs> Thank Let's you so go much. Giants. Thank Let's you. go Giants. Thank you, Bobby. Good stuff. 201-939-4513. If we get one real quick, maybe we can squeeze one in here um, before we get to Tom Cakert, who, again, covers uh, Iowa football for Hawkeye Report. Mm-hmm. Uh, not not a ton of, of Iowa plays this year. It's a little bit of a lighter load, but we'll hit on the guys, and then we'll get back to your calls mm-hmm. at 201 As I mentioned, we haven't hosted together in a while. Yeah. So I don't know what your thought process is right now. If you're the Giants and you're sitting in six, like, what are you thinking about right now in terms of what they should or will do when they pick in <laughs> we'll a couple do. weeks? <laughs> well, there's a difference. What you think they should do and then what you think they will do. You know what I mean? I mean, it first off, I I think that you try to to get as many draft picks as you can. If there was a way to like find a way to squeeze a few more guys in, if you if you're sitting on a guy that a lot of people want and people are calling you about it, get a couple more draft picks. Get how as, far down would you be willing to move? Um, depending on how many picks you're going to give me. Okay. Okay. Right? So so it, it, so you'll be willing to go into the teens then. Yeah. If, if, if you, the right if, if, if you got like a first. A f- maybe a first and a third or a first and a second, you know, so if you can like get a couple of picks for that one guy, then yeah, you know, you, that, that, that's what you, that's what you do. You, you try and find as many of those guys. Um, it, you just try to find as many of those guys as you can. If you're not going to do that, you talk, you take the best player. And I think it probably was going to be a receiver, but stranger things happen. Like some, they, you know, they might kick one or two of the quarterbacks down 
you may have to make a decision. Uh, Marvin Harrison. Well, that would well him. that would be your trade down, right? If yeah. one of the quarterbacks get the six, and maybe you're the Giants, and, yeah, then you're probably, and he's not the guy you love, and your guy you think yeah. can be the guy, that's where the opportunity is. But you make down. him sound like he's the guy you love. <laughs> well, of course you do, absolutely, and and that's why the Giants are not going to put it out yeah. there picking six yeah. in the next couple of weeks. I'd be shocked if we saw it, it leaked, and we haven't seen anything even remotely reported about which one of these quarterbacks the Giants like. Yeah, and, and not really. that They, they say they like a couple of receivers. They've been, you know, talking them up a little bit to try to make people, other people look at them as well. So, Which one do you like, other three receivers? If I, Well, of course you take Harrison if he was available, yep. uh, even though he didn't run other. or do anything. Then I'll go neighbors. I, I mean, I like neighbors. I like the fact that when he's running routes, he's running wide open. I'm a big guy who runs wide open. It, it's my favorite thing. Yeah, I'm with you. And he's just explosive neighbors, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he yeah. gets the ball in the sand. It reminds me of Odell against the Ravens with the slant, catches yeah. it, and it's, it's over. It's like you got to, if he's even, he's leaving. So that's what I like. It's not that I don't like the, the, the kid out of Washington. I think that kid's a great receiver as well. He's a bigger guy, you know, kind of a tree topper. But I, I like guys that I see that are extremely open. And he was open a lot, too, because he had a, a lot of receivers around him. So he was definitely open no, a lot. I'm and, with and, you. and a great quarterback to get him the ball. We are we are on the same page, and you you would go wide receiver over offensive tackle if that option was presented to you. I mean, again, assuming the players are equal in talent. If the players are equal in talent, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm still going to take the. And this is why I'm a, I have a left tackle. Most of the guys we're talking about at the top of the draft that are tackles are are, are are left tackles. Can they move? Probably. Will they be great if they move? They'll always have the excuse, I was a left tackle. You don't have to move a wide receiver. You no, just put him in he, there. He goes from side to side <laughs> right. constantly. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm with you. All right, let's get to our next guest. Uh, He is Tom Cakert. He's the publisher of the Hawkeye Report at HawkeyeReport.com. Tom, you got John Schmelk and Howard Cross here in East Rutherford, New Jersey. We appreciate the time. Thank you for joining us today. Guys, how you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? We're doing great, Tom. And this is not um, one of the busier years for Iowa prospects entering the draft, but we did just have a... Uh, individual pro day yesterday. Cooper DeGene has been dealing with that lower leg yeah. injury. He came back and uh, he didn't do the agility testing, which I, which I do want to ask you about. But otherwise, his his leaps, his runs, and all that stuff, uh, he checked every box he could at his workout yesterday. Yeah, um, by all accounts, uh, talking to some people in Iowa City today, too, they said he just looked tremendous and looked like Cooper DeGene. And, and uh, I think the, the interesting thing with him and you guys already have a Hawkeye on your team in the defensive backfield and Dane Felton. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, is Cooper going to end up being a quarter? Is he going to be the next Jason Seahorn? It, or is he um, is he going to end up being kind of more of a, a nickel kind of safety, kind of hybrid position in the NFL? Well, what do you think? I, I'm, I'm leaning towards more of the hybrid. I really am. Oh, I, okay. I think he's kind of that – Slot and because he's he's bigger, more physical. I don't know if he's going to end up being a corner. It's sort of like, um, and Desmond King was a great corner at Iowa. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a lot. He's had a really good, solid career um, in the NFL, uh, most recently with the Texans. But he's been more safety, kind of nickel hybrid kind of position than he has been. Uh, a true corner. Well, he was a true corner and a, and, a, and a darn good one at Iowa. I mean, he was won the Thorpe Award playing corner at Iowa in his junior year. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where Cooper gets kind of kind of slotted. But I think late first round is probably where he's going to land. And, and just to follow up, you mentioned the corner safety thing. I think that's why some people were a little disappointed. We didn't see that agility testing from Cooper DeGene because I think if there's one yeah. consistent criticism I've seen, Tom, on his athleticism is that he might be a little stiff in the hips where he can't yep. change direction quite as well, and that's why I think some people might think he winds up at safety. For me, I draft him, I put it at corner, let him fail out of corner before you move him to safety. You know what I mean? See if yep. he can do it. But is that yep. something you even saw on tape when you watched the games this year, that, that maybe that, that change of direction, yep. that, that hip tightness could be an issue? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, initially, because we cover recruiting, so when um, when he was recruited to Iowa, everyone thought he was going to be a safety, mm. uh, either mm. free or strong. Didn't really know, but that's kind of where he was He was penciled at. And then they had some injuries at cornerback his true freshman year, and they just sort of threw him out there. And guess what? He's pretty good. <laughs> so 
he just, uh, you know, he's just one of those kids that I don't care where you put him. He's going to make plays, and he's a great, Alex says, great punt returner. Wow, so, that's, uh, that'll be big for him right there. So that's that's that other skill set that um, he's just one of those guys that the, the natural instincts are just off the charts. He's um, just a he's a great football player. Well, the great thing about him, you know, you know, despite the tight hips, he has great ball skills. He he really knows how to track yep. the football. He, he when he gets his hands on him, it, it, he he usually not. He's just either knocking them down to make sure nobody can get to him or catching them, and he catches a lot of them. So, uh, as a cornerback, when you're doing interceptions and able to make plays on balls like that, that kind of no matter what they're saying about you, that raises their that raises everybody's eyes up really high and say like, hmm, interesting. Let me give him give him a second look. So yeah, I, I like it from that aspect. Yeah, and yep. look, and, and I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 please answer. Go ahead. No, it's, it's he's really just, you're right about the ball skills. It's just, That's one of the things that, that just stuck out. Um, you know, he was an Army All-American Bowl uh, participant, um, and he's from a, a, a town in Iowa, northwest Iowa, where the population is about 900 people. So mm. he's just. You know, he just played a small level of football, and a lot of those kids just fly under the radar, and you don't get discovered. But um, he certainly did, and and um, he's just just an electric football player. I mean, just makes plays in the biggest moments. He's going to rise up and make a play. Yeah, and I wonder if he might be involved with the new kick return role. You can get him in there in the return yeah. game in the NFL. Yeah. And Howard, what Absolutely. I would do, if you wanted to do all we're sitting here, do a Google search of Cooper DeJean dunks. Oh, I saw him. I saw him. Oh, I, I, was, yeah. I was looking him up. He 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 was a little hooper now. He was a little hooper. I'm like, dang, how tall is that guy? <laughs> he was jacking guys yep. up. I appreciate that part of his game. But he looks good. So we know. So like I said, very athletic. Like the the one criticism, the knock, the hips. Don't know how bad that you know was going to stand against him because if he's a good returner, he has good ball skills. He has great hands, and he got a little speed. There's going to be a lot he can do in the league. Now you got a couple other guys that that you think might might get drafted as well. Yeah, and look, I, I, yeah. I, I, I Tom, I want to start with Eric Gall real quick because we know the the uh, tradition of Iowa tight ends is, yes. is very strong. Yes. You go back to George Kittle, Matt Laporta. There's other guys in there too that have had a lot of success. And boy, through the first few games this year, Eric All looked like he was going to be added to that list. Then he suffered that terrible knee injury. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give us an update on where he is from a rehabilitation standpoint, and uh, how high is the upstate up upstate upside Upsize. for a guy like Eric All um, when he finally does get healthy? Yeah, and we we only saw him for one year at Iowa, and really was like six games because he he transferred in from Michigan. He was a okay. teammate of Cade, Cade McNamara, uh, and and came with Cade uh, to University of Iowa, and and uh, boy, he's just he moves so well. He he almost seems kind of undersized. He was like kind of like a hybrid um, wide receiver slash tight end. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not a great blocker. Uh, I didn't think, but really moves well in the past game and able to catch the football. And then, you know, unfortunately, towards ACL in uh, the Wisconsin game and really kind of a gruesome hit um, yeah. to his knee that um, ended his season. Uh, he did not run at the combine, didn't do anything at the combine. I, I don't, I think he's one of those guys that if you draft him, it's almost like you're stashing him for a year and you're just going to kind of let him, if he helps in the second half of the year, great. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it's sort of like one of those guys where it's almost like you're redshirting him. Yeah. Uh, but there's a dividend that you're going to get a guy that was probably, you know, if he's if he had stayed healthy and finished up the season playing at the level he was, he's probably a second, third round pick, probably third Ooh. round, I would say. Okay. And you know, now you can you draft him in the fifth, sixth, seventh round. And you stash them for a year, and you're getting some good value uh, if you've got a need at the tight end position down the road. That's true. Tell me, okay, tell us about Logan Lee. Then it, it, he's your last guy on your list. I loved him in Frisco, by the way. Mm -hmm. I, I thought he, you know, he was at the Shrine game, and I thought he was very explosive down there. Yeah, one of my favorite people, uh, Logan Lee. Uh, he's from my home area, uh, so um, just known him for a long time, and he came to Iowa as potentially being a tight end 
Hmm. And uh, then they, you know, but he's just, uh, he put on the weight. He was like 240 pounds when he came in. Now he's probably, you know, 280, 290. Um, hard working, comes from a farm community. So just kind of got those values to him where he's just hard work um, every day. You don't have to ever worry about this kid. He's he's no problems. Probably going to be a little undersized at tackle, uh, but a pretty good athlete uh, from my perspective. Um, probably not a starter where you're playing heavy snaps, but you know he's going to give you 20 snaps a game at a really high level, and you're not going to see a, a total uh, collapse or fall back in, in your group. So um, he's a guy that you know, third day take him and you you can plug him in and and he's going to help you in in every way possible he's a he'll help you on you know um ats kicks field goals that sort of stuff too so he's going to help you in a lot of different ways there's one other guy that we should mention yeah because iowa has the best punter in the country and tory taylor and i don't know if the giants need a punter but <laughs> if they do we got this Aussie guy that's uh, that was the the Ray Guy Award winner who I think is going to get drafted. Wow! So what did he average? He was like forty five a punt, um, just huge hang time. He's just he probably I would guess for and you know Iowa's offense was not good last year. I don't know if you guys were aware of that, but it yeah. was really not good at all. Um, and um, uh, so people got to wearing these t-shirts that said punting is winning because without him <laughs> Iowa wasn't winning uh and he was just dropping balls inside the 20 inside the 10 yeah. uh angling things just he is great touch um just uh incredible punter so if the Giants need a punter that third day that's a guy to look at is Tory Taylor Don I got one more for you um and again folks we want to get in right now at 201-939-4513 we'll take your calls the rest of the show after we uh, say goodbye to Tom and Tom. Great information, great stuff. Final question for me: You mentioned the Iowa offense. Uh, my wife is a Des Moines native, so I've kind of adopted oh. Iowa as my okay. as you know, growing up in New York. You don't really have a big college football team here, so kind of a, I've adopted sure. Iowa as my as my home program. Uh, he's got a Caitlin Clark jersey. You you don't know. I I do not have. <laughs> I did get my wife the Caitlin Clark t shirt though. Yeah, I did do a, that. Um, I will get one. She's great. No, nah, she is really <laughs> phenomenal player. Um, <laughs> They tried to open up the offense a little bit last year, and then everyone got hurt, including the quarterback. Yeah. Uh, do, do you feel like that can make a little bit of progress next year? Because they always have a good defense. They always have a good offensive line. Uh, they can run the ball usually. They yeah. just can never pass the ball. Is, is that? Do you see that getting fixed anytime soon, Tom? Well, they got to Fingers are crossed. And uh, they have a new offensive coordinator, Tim Lester, who was uh, – Kind of like a quality control guy, but studying um, other opposing defenses up in Green Bay. He, had, he was the Western Michigan coach for several years and, and uh, was working for uh, Matt LaFleur this past year, kind of okay. prepping his defenses. Um, so he's coming in to run the offense. And, and, you know, we just got done actually talking to some of the defensive players, and they're just raving about the offense and how how more explosive it is and how much better it is. and. So we'll see. Proof will be in the pudding. I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to be. I'm going to be skeptical until I see him dropping thirty on the board every week. Then I'll. Then I'll be a believer in the Iowa offense. But um, you know, it's it's always going to be kind of a Kirk Ferentz offense, which means it's going to be a very methodical pro style uh, offense, and that's that's kind of just his his. Uh, mode of operation, and it's served him well over the years, so you can't really complain too much about it. By the way, I should mention the Giants just hired one of Kirk Suns to be their assistant offensive line coach. Oh, yeah? Can you tell us a little bit about him, Tom? Do you have any insight on him? Did they, who did they hire? Steve? Uh, the Oh, gosh. And, you know, now I'm, hold on. I, I, I believe it, it was the one that played in the league. Senior league. You're, you're, you're oh, uh, James. Yes. Yes. James Ferentz. Yes. Okay, yeah, James is awesome. He's a really good guy and a great technician. Who's a really good center for Iowa. Uh, stuck around in the league. Had no. He will be the first to tell you. Had no business sticking in the league for ten years. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just. Uh, hey, he, I saw him last summer and I said he's still sticking around. And he goes. They haven't told me to leave yet, so I'm going to yeah, still awesome. keep. Show, I'm going to keep showing up until until they tell me to leave. So, um, yeah, he's. Uh, He's terrific, and he'll really help. He's a good teacher of the game. Yeah, we're looking forward to having him here. Tom, awesome stuff, my friend. Tell the folks where they can find all your great Iowa coverage. 
Yeah, yeah. Go go to HawkeyeReport.com. Uh, on the uh, we're part of the On Three Network, and stop by. We're just uh, got a lot of a lot of stuff, and we'll be covering the draft too. So that's awesome. Well, we look forward to seeing it, Tom. We always know yeah. Iowa players when they come into the pros. They're smart. They're tough. And they know how to play in a pro system. So uh, teams know what they're getting when they get Iowa players. And I think the track record is actually pretty strong when you draft those Iowa players from Kirk so Ferentz's far, system. Yep, Appreciate the time, my friend. Hey, thanks, guys. That's Tom Caker. Go again. Check it out his stuff at HawkeyeReport.com. They're opening up the offense. Boy, they're going to shock a lot of people if they do that in Iowa. <laughs> I, I, I was, I was going to joke with them. You know, they have to show off their offense against their new natural rivals, USC and UCLA. <laughs> Out there in the Big Ten West. <laughs> it's better to talk about Caitlin than talk about that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Are those the only? Th- did they end up adding Washington and Oregon too? I think they're uh, they're did about they? to. I think I think basically almost everybody left, except for like Arizona and well, Arizona State went to the Big Twelve, right? Or Arizona went to the Big Twelve, or I, both of them maybe? They just I don't. Know. I, they just they tore their conference apart. I can't apart. keep this. Tra- I can't keep track. And they chase those TV deals, man. Did Stanford go anywhere? No. I have, I have no idea. No. Tom, look that up. Can you find out where all the Pac-12 <laughs> teams went? I have no idea. They, they used to be Pac-12? <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, 201-939-4513. Let's go to my OG Steve in D.C. He wants to talk some drafts. Steve-O, what's up, what's buddy? Up, Steve? What's, what's going on, Johnny? How you doing? Well, good, man. Very How good. are you? Long time no speak. I'm... I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Peace to you, Howard, man. Appreciate everything you've done for for my G, man. Much respect to you and much love as well. Thank you so um, much. Uh, listen, man. I, uh, I'm a little worn out. You know, I'm a little worn out. You know, I, you know, Charlie and I, we we communicate on a daily. <laughs> <laughs> on a daily, you know, we're old school with it. But uh, I'm surprised so, you're able you to know, think and function having <laughs> to talk to Charlie every day, Steve. I'm impressed. Listen, that's my ace, man. That's uh, my I love ace, Charlie. So. You know that. I just tease him. Listen. Listen, you know, um, it's it, it's wearing thin on us. You know, we're, we're arguing, we're fighting, we're, you know, we're talking all the possibilities. And I'm just going to tell you this. You know, Don, I, I respect everyone's perspective when it comes to this quarterback. I'm I'm pro quarterback at this. Let me just make it clear. I'm pro quarterback. Okay. Mm-hmm. For many, many reasons. I mean, you know. So I would just simply say this. Um, and Steve, believe it or not, despite what people on Twitter will tell you, I'm actually extremely open to picking the quarterback. I just want it to be the right one. You know what I'm saying? I I, I hear what you're saying, John. When I tell you this, and I know I've watched all your interviews. I don't care if it, you know if it's Kurt, War, you know Kurt Warner. I you know I watched. All, you know, uh, I forgot. I can't even think the quarterback was actually here. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank right now. But listen, I'm been, I've been doing so much research on these quarterbacks because really that's what I want and. Mm-hmm. I'm a lot higher than the, on these quarterbacks than most people. Early on, you know, so, but I would just say this. I mean, every every pick you take is going to have its pros, its cons, its risk, and its rewards. Absolutely. And I'll just, t- I'll just tell you, I, you know, I understand the fact that, you know, that Michael Penix was injured, you know, a few, you know more than once on both his rotators, whatever, you know, and, yeah. but it was two years ago. And this talent is to me, it's 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 way too it's way too much to to, to turn around to, to pass on. I feel like we're looking a gift horse in the mouth and we're overthinking. And here's what I get it: if people want to cite that and oh, that's the reason we're coming away from Daniel Andrews, I get that. But here's what I don't get: is when people say, oh, I'll move back and I'll get him in the second or the bottom of the first. If the guy's not good enough to pick at the six. Don't do me a favor. Do not take a, a receiver if you're not going to be, in our opinion, smart enough to take a quarterback. Because I actually, you know, I believe it. I'm, even though I'm not a McCarthy guy, I do think he's worthy of the sixth pick. I'm a Penix guy all the way. Really? I believe. I believe. I believe his. Yeah, really. I would, I'm gonna get out. You just, you know, you can have his thing. I would just say this. That's not my guy. First of all, Howard. That's not what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not saying. I believe. I'm a Penix guy. And mainly because I really believe he's the number two all day if you remove these injuries. I'm not afraid of the whole age thing. He's not 34. He's 23. So, I mean, and I'm not going to hold his experience or the players he played mm-hmm. with around him. But I know what my eyes are seeing. Yeah. And he's clearly the better prospect and the most accurate and the best leader. He makes all the players on the field better. And that's what I want for my New York football, Giants. I understand this is a, you're rolling the dice with any players. 
give money, don't make money. Michael Penix is going to shine somewhere else. So if you're not going to take him, in the, in the, well, any quarterback in the six, I don't want to move back and let somebody else just get more picks. Let somebody else take the, you know, the quarterback. But I don't want a receiver because the receiver is not going to move the needle. And I'm tired of watching track stars running up and down the field and not get hit with the ball anyway. So move back and get more picks if you're not going to take a quarterback. I can't tell you who to be happy with, but if you don't deem one of these guys are going to be there at the, you know, when you pick, then move up and go get your guy. But stop acting like we don't need somebody. I've already known you. Do whatever you got to do, but to sit here and watch all these other teams come from behind us and jump us like we the smartest guys in the room and we don't need a quarterback, that is disheartening. Uh, well, Steve, all right, Steve, uh, Burrow, right, Steve, Steve, hold on. I, I want to ask you a question. Would you be willing to trade up for one of these guys, or do you want to just sit and pick? Because, because yeah. I think because yeah. I think you because I think you can sit and pick for Penix. I think if that's your guy, you can sit there and pick, and you'll be okay. But would yeah. you be willing to move up a couple spots, cost yourself yeah. next year's one to get? Somebody else. Absolutely, they don't okay. gotta be. Listen, they don't have to be on Penix board, but go get your guy. Stop acting like we don't need a quarterback. See, I'm, that's all I'm saying. If Penix and you don't see somebody there that's worthy of that six pick, then go and get him. Go and get him. Mm. But don't come up with excuses talking about oh we couldn't afford it, the price is this, that, and the other. All these other teams willing to do it, but we're not. No, I'm not. That's not acceptable. Get it done. I'm not in the excuse business. Okay, get it done. If your guy's not gonna be that six. Go and get him where he's at. And if we had the 26 pick, Howard and everybody else talking about, oh, this pick that you have, then I'd be glad to take him where we are. But we got a six pick. So it's no difference to me between the six and the second round. They both have value. To dismiss it and act like, oh, it's too high, I, that's a ridiculous argument to me. And I don't, you know, so listen, everybody, I respect other people's opinion, but to me, it's just, if he's not worthy at the six pick, then what are you doing wasting a second round pick on him? We could do it, you know, we could get, uh, you know, a, a, re, you know, a receiver in this draft because there's a lot of them in there that are probably mm-hmm. be number one. So a receiver is not the answer at six. That's the last thing we need to be doing. The very last thing. I appreciate y'all letting me get my rant out. No mm-hmm. problem. But I'm Steve. telling you, if I'm a, I'm a pro panic because I think he's going to be the best, the second best quarterback. Now, in the Steve, real quick, Steve, him. real quick, uh, can I give you my little thumbnail analysis on Pedix just so you have it? I know it, but I want to listen. Yes, absolutely. I okay. know it, though, John. Okay, well, I look, again. I mean, go ahead, go ahead. No, I mean, no problem. That's okay. Yeah, look, I, I, I like Michael Penix as a player. I think, uh, to your point, he is an excellent arm. I think when he has a clean pocket, he's able to throw the ball down the field. Um, he's a tremendous downfield ball thrower. Um, he throws that back shoulder throw extremely well in the coverage. Um, he gets rid of the ball quickly. I think he does read pretty quickly, and he gets the ball out, which is why his sack rate is as low as it is, along with the fact that he's a really good offensive line in front of him. Mm-hmm. I think that's part of it, too. Um, I think that's what he – if you give him a clean pocket and let him operate unfettered, I think he can be a really good downfield passer. Here's the problem you run into. When he gets to the NFL – Mm-hmm. No, and look, and look, and he and he's able to to na- to move his feet and navigate around the rush a little bit. But here's here are the issues I see with him, and I'm going to put the injuries aside because I'm not a doctor. I don't know what the medical say, right? <laughs> okay, but Thank that God. that is a going to be a concern for a lot of teams. I think when you do and go to the Michigan game, when you do get pressure on him and things break down a little bit, I think the accuracy does break down. I think oftentimes he is doesn't hit guys. He's accurate. But his ball placement in terms of hitting guys in stride isn't quite as good as, as I think you see on the TV copy. When you look at the coach's tape, I don't think it's quite as good, especially when he has to move his feet. And I do think that he's, he's more not, of a he, pure pocket passer. Yes, he, he is a pure pocket passer. And he tested well. I think he's a straight-ahead athlete. I don't think he's a great uh, side-to-side of you know that that type of elusive type of guy. So And he doesn't work the middle of the field in small areas a ton. So those are my knocks on him. Again, I, I think he is a chance if he goes to the right system, at the right NFL team with the right pieces around them, he is a chance to be a good NFL quarterback. For me, at pick number six, given the other high-end players I could get at that position, and it's the same thing I'll say about J.J. McCarthy, that's a little rich for me. What's up? I'm John Wall. And I'm C.J. Toledano, and we're starting a new podcast presented by DraftKings called Point Game. Everyone, please welcome Coach John Calipari. We're getting beat by 18. My first game in Kentucky. They're saying, Cal's a bust. He can't coach. This is crazy. John Wall runs down the floor and makes a buzzer beater. Yep. You remember that, John? That's my first game win I ever made. Remember you said you never seen me do that. Ladies and gentlemen, DeMarcus Boogie Cousins. I called Boogie. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm about to commit to Duke. And I hung up on him. <laughs> 
<laughs> bro, I'm talking about, do you want to tell me how many times he called me all type of names? Bro, you really sold me out. You doing this. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I was sick. I remember that like yesterday, man. Love you, John Wall. Thanks, Coach. Love you, too. You made me everything I am today. Nah, you made me. You made me. I love it. Check out Point Game with John Wall and CJ Toledano on the iHeartRadio app, DraftKings YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. It wasn't even supposed to be That's my, my day. That's my day, bro. <laughs> right, listen, I'm going to say this last thing, please. Just like Craig Water told you, first of all, they all got flaws, John. Don't act, you say that like he can't be fit. Of course. Yeah, he, got the worst, he got the worst mechanics out of all of them, and he scares me in the green zone. So let's not even talk about how inaccurate and you know, sporadic he gets. Over. And so he's had plenty of time to clear that up. Oh, no. So look, they oh, no. For, well, see, first of all, Drake May is a redshirt sophomore, okay? First of all, he's barely he – hasn't played a lot, he hasn't played a lot of football, and he played with – an offensive line and a group of wide receivers that wouldn't even see the field in Washington. They wouldn't even see the field compared to listen, the talent Penix had around him in you Washington. Can't, you can't control who you play with, but I can sit here talk about the competition level. Listen, John, we get, I will break Drake May down and say, but to leave me, just like uh, I forget um, who's a man who's, whose brother plays for the uh, Raiders who used to play for us. I don't even know why I can't think of it. The quarterback used to play for us. His brother played for the Ra- or played for the Raiders. Uh, d- uh, heard, David Carr. David Carr. Yeah, yeah, you, you watch his breakdown. He watch, watch his breakdown. Here's the thing. He, he said, he did, to me, they don't even really belong on the same field as Michael Penix, skill wise. He's just processing his elite. But listen, I appreciate all the time you gave me. I, I don't want to say nothing else because I'm afraid I'm going to get cut out before I can articulate other things. <laughs> You're all me, good, Steve. Thank you very much. That was I a very, very good call. Thank you, Steve. Good call. So, so I'm not opposed to picking quarterback that high. I'm not for picking quarterback that high. I say pick the best player that's available. Uh, if you need to move up, you have to be really sold on who you're moving up to get. And that's just not anything. Yep. You just got to be like super sold, like, hey, look, what am I going to give up to get somebody that I think is going to be a game changer at the moment and doesn't need 100% protection maybe because that's what you, that's what a quarterback is going to be basically in, in our division. Uh, and in the league in general. You can't just sit back there and no, take sips of coffee. You get, yeah. You're going to so, have to deal with you know, like, I, like I said, I, I've said in the past, like there are quarterbacks out there that you can get later. I think the kid from Florida State that people aren't thinking about that was right up there for the Heisman. Like he was really talented, hurt his knee. If he came out in the draft, guy you should look at. Give him a red shirt here. And by the way, you mentioned I think Eric Hall from Iowa too, right? With the Waller stuff, yeah, you get a, you could pick yeah. a guy like him in round five or yeah. six and redshirt him for red, a year, and then f- try him next year. Yeah. I'd, I'd be okay with that too. Uh, by the way. Spencer Rattler down down in uh, South Carolina, another guy that's like you know it's not going to be there at the top two or three, and then you make your decision. You got two talented guys that are going to be out there. Hey, look, and by the way, he's right about Drake May. Drake May's not a perfect prospect. Like no. he's scatter shot accuracy. No, no, no. Um, he he can is because of his footwork and stuff like that. And there are a lot of people out there yeah, that but, I respect a whole lot, including Kurt Warner, that love Michael Penix. And but, Michael Penix has a lot going for him. But everybody can improve. Of course. Yep, and everybody can be exposed to, but everybody can improve. So, you know, I like I like the quarterbacks that are that are at the top of the draft. I think mm-hmm. they're going to be interested in see how far they come. And I don't have nothing against McCarthy. I just don't – he didn't play in a system where he had to use his arm. So I don't know if, you know, going from throwing it 15 to maybe 20 times a game to having to throw it 30 times a game and being dependent on – if that would affect him or not. Daniel Jeremiah, I thought, came out with an interesting comp for Penix, which the more I thought about it, the more I liked it. Okay. Joe Flacco. Penix is Joe Flacco. Mm. It's not bad. When you think about it, It's one's a lefty, one's a righty. I get that. Yeah. But it's not bad. I, like I said, I like Penix. I like Penix as a quarterback. I don't know if I like him as rich as number six, but I like him. That's where I am, too. Yeah. I love watching him play. That yeah. Washington he, team was, was so phenomenal. much fun to watch last year. He was phenomenal. Year. He, he fit yeah. the ball in when he needed to fit it in. I think a little the middle field gets a little cloudy. I don't know. Not sure why, but little field gets a little cloudy to him when he's trying to throw it. So, outside of that, mm-hmm. Hey, look, and I, I'll say this, too. He mentioned the Kurt Warner mm-hmm. huddle. Go check that out. It's on the Giants Huddle Podcast right now. It's half mm-hmm. an hour of Kurt Warner basically just talking about why it's so difficult, even for him, a Hall of Fame quarterback, mm-hmm. to evaluate college quarterbacks. And the reason he said to me, and again, you can find the Giants Auto Podcast, Giants app, Giants.com slash podcast, uh, YouTube, wherever you find your podcast, just search for Giants Huddle. Uh, we have that, Matt Waldman today. We have a bunch of great interviews last week, too. We have mm-hmm. one huddle a day, he folks, between now and the draft. So there's a ton mm-hmm. of content. Go find it, subscribe, and listen. So the point he made is that, and, and we have one more call on hall. We will get to you. Mm-hmm. He's trying to evaluate these college quarterbacks 
by trying to see things they do in college that they're going to be asked to do in the pros, right? Dropping back, reading the defense, making throws. He goes, John, I got to be honest with you. I'm watching these guys, and you know, you just don't see a ton of it. Like you watch Jaden Daniels; he's accurate, he's fast, he's puts good touch on the ball. But he goes, they run the same play 15 times a game. Yeah. Like you're not going to be able to do that in the NFL, right? So yeah. what happens when things change? And that's why with these quarterback guys, I'm not going to really, you know, get really mad and argue with you. Because everyone has their own taste, and it's a literally a 50-50 hit rate in the NFL with these first-round quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. It's hard. The NFL is not good at it. No one's good at it. It's really a really, really tough thing to do, um, especially when, like us, you don't have the opportunity to sit down with these guys, talk to them, go through tape with them in the meeting room, and all that stuff. So it's really hard. So I get it. We can have our disagreements on it, and that's fine. It's just a really, really tough quarterback I, to evaluate. I, I think the thing that's hardest, probably the hardest thing of all, is that guys don't. Did you lose me? No, go ahead. Go, You're the, just on. The, can't, the guys don't do this. That that it's if you can sit down and ask a guy when he runs when the play is run, what was the play call? What are the routes? Why'd you make this decision? You're correct, right? Those, those are the things that you know correct. as fans and, and and we're fans basically. Uh, even though we do the broadcast, there fans of of the moment. If we don't know why you're doing something and what what you're supposed to be looking at, then we don't know. And that's why, like I said, it's yeah. a, like Joe Shane has pointed, that's how why it's so important to get into these yeah. meetings and get on the video, get on the board with these guys and Brian Dable to figure out what their thought yeah. process is on these plays. And without and Kurt Warner said the same thing in my interview with him. He goes, Without talking to these guys and talking through what their thought process is in these plays and what they're seeing, yeah. it's hard for us and to me to make a definitive judgment. I will not talk about quarterbacks definitively. Because I know my level of information on them, and frankly, I've never played the position. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. Nope. I, I mean, so I, I'm I'm going off. I'm making the best evaluation I can based on their physical tools. We talked about this with Stephen Ruiz on the huddle last week. Yeah. Since I I don't know what their processing is, I don't know what they're thinking. I can't see that from tape, but I can see what their physical tools are. So that's what I have to base my evaluation on. It, it's like I said, I, I tell people this all the time when you're watching quarterbacks. You see a guy scrambled outside the pocket and he's looking really great, gets the long pass down the field. That's awesome. Who was he supposed to throw it to? Right. Like what 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 was the play design? Who who are the three reads? You know, you, you very rarely hear them talking about in college, or maybe the announcers don't do it a lot, but you never hear about people talking about going to their second read and their third read and because they don't really know what the plays are themselves. And what kind of read is it? Is it a full field progression? Is it, all right, if it's covered to you, throw to this guy. If it's man, you throw to this guy. You don't even know yeah, what if, the progression if you, if you, if you is know, on the If you know the guy's pressed on the, on, the, on the backside, are you looking, okay, you know he's going to have to run a go. If he's being pressed, it's, where's the safety standing? What's that do to the guy in the, in the slot or the tight end? And as you look to the far side, is he standing on the inside of the guy or the outside of the guy? What's the see, leverage, like, right? yeah, mm-hmm. So you have to know, like, okay, down, set. Is it a, a straight drop back? You, are you kicking a five-step drop? So you know where the ball is going to be. Or who is the back going to check down? Is the back not checking down? Like you have to know all the things he should be looking at before he starts running. And how soon did he run? Yeah. Did he run at two seconds? Did he run at three or four seconds? Did he, he had more time? Or was did he, he run to instantly? Stay in there and find somebody? Yeah. yeah. Howard, you hundred <laughs> so, percent. It's just a really, really hard I, position yeah. to evaluate. And, so. I lo- and I love all these, these exciting guys that bounce around and do everything, but. If you don't know where they're supposed to be going with the ball, they may be making mistakes when they're doing that. So right. it's going to be interesting to see. Hundred percent, hundred percent true. So, which is I kind would, of an argument for Penix, huh? No, it, it is. No, you're right, right about that. And what I would say, Howard, is that everyone, and I know this is a very tough thing on social media and in the real world, everyone should exercise a fair bit of humility when it comes to saying things definitively, especially about the quarterback position. Because it's such a hard thing to do. It's one of the hardest evaluations in all of sports. Be a little humble with it, okay? You know, right now, Drake May is my second guy. Would I be shocked if Jaden Daniels is better than Drake May? Nope. Wouldn't shock me. Wouldn't shock me at all. Because that's the nature of the position. No one knew C.J. Stroud was going to be as great as he was in his rookie year. No one. And mm-hmm. I even talked to, I'm sure Kurt has no problem with me saying this, when we were done, me and him were just chatting for a couple minutes before we got off, mm-hmm. and he goes... And I'm like, yeah, Kurt, I told him, I go, I appreciate your humility in these evaluations. He goes, well, yeah. I mean, you watched C.J. Stroud's tape at Ohio State last year. There was no reason to think he was going to come out and be that good in the NFL. There was nope. no reason to think that. I had no reason to think that. Nobody did. because, And that's what makes this so difficult. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. But really? we'll, we'll see. It is, and that's why it's fun. That's why it's fun to talk about, debate, and argue, and that's why we're doing this. So, mm-hmm. Steve, good call. I appreciate your love for Penix. Charlie, I appreciate your love for Penix. 
And uh, I hope he, by all accounts, he's a good kid. I hope he has a really good NFL hey, career. I think he's going to have a good career. Yeah. Let's go to Jamal in Maryland. He's up next on Big Blue Kickoff Live. Hi, Jamal. Hey, how's it going? What's Very up, buddy? Uh, thank you. First time caller. Been listening since the beginning. Uh, much respect to you, John and Howard. Um, I just wanted to talk about the actual process of building uh, a winning team, a Super Bowl contending team. Sure. And it seems like fans only have one way. And it's not just fans. I hear a lot of so-called experts and professionals. They only talk about one way where you have to have a quarterback. Now, saying that, obviously, I understand that quarterback is the most important position on any football team. And that's going back since the beginning. Bart Starr was the most important player on this team. Uh, I mean, you you can go back to the beginning. Quarterback has always been the most important. But what I what I what I see with my eyes, what I see every year, is the best team that wins the Super Bowl. You go back the last three Super Bowl teams that won a Super Bowl. They yeah, had a good Jamal, team. I I hear you, dude, but they also had Patrick Mahomes, Matthew Stafford, and Tom oh, Brady. Oh, okay, that's, I'm about to get. I'm about to get to that. <laughs> I'm about to get, no, 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 I'm about to get to that. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, but before the Chiefs get Patrick Mahomes, weren't they in the playoffs? Yeah, but they, they had a good. No, they, no, they, no. Had, they had a good. They had a good team. Correct. And then then they went and they got their guy. Mm-hmm. You, if you look at the Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Eagles, they they went up and they got Carson Wentz. You look at that Ross, They had a good team. All right, let's go to let's go to the Rams because they did it a completely unconventional way. They went through free agency and they pieced together a Super Bowl team. They didn't get it done with Jared Goff. Then they went and got their guy. It was separate. a trade. It was a trade, right? It was a trade. And, exactly. So I said that's unconditional, but they yep. built the team first. This, if you look at San Francisco, San Francisco Buddhist, and they, they, they had Jimmy G. Everybody thought Jimmy G was a top 10 guy. I'm screaming from the top of my lungs. He's not. Yeah, It is, it is <laughs> hard, though. Really Jamal, I, I, totally, I totally get what you're saying, but it is hard once you build the team and you're a good team to find a great quarterback because so often these quarterbacks but that's, come that's my with point. top five not- picks. A lot of these guys aren't. Uh, uh, Nick Foles wasn't a great quarterback. Uh, Stafford, Stafford was was drafted uh, top ten. He's a really really good quarterback. Is he, is he Mahomes? Is he is he is he is he great? No, but he's a, no, 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 but he is a guy that that when he's on is a top five quarterback. Yeah, I, I th- okay, that's 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 fair. But what did that do for Detroit? I, I respect I respect what you're saying. I do. Hold yeah. on, but what what did it do for Detroit? He was he, the guy. No, no, he's no, a no, franchise no, Jamal, quarterback. Jamal, and they did right. not win. No, but Jamal, no, if you right. have a bad team but a good quarterback, you're not going to win. That's the Super my Bowl. point. No, you're right about that's that. That's my point. But, but the team, the guy, my point. guys, ahead, guys are trying. To, all these guys are trying to build teams, right? And I understand it. It doesn't look like way. Right. It doesn't look like that. Everybody. Look at Carolina. Look at what Carolina did last year. Okay. They stole the whole team just to get a quarterback. But they thought, and now we're shocked that they they're they're horrible. But I'm telling you, a lot of teams are trying to build good teams. Now, the reason why they do it the way they're doing it, if you think about it, is this: you need a quarterback on a five year deal as a rookie. If you have the quarterback on his five year deal as a rookie, and be able to get him in this extension before you have to give him the extension. You know, give him was it the six year option or fifth year, fifth year op- option? Yeah. Fifth year option. Then you can build your team around him. Right, because you have so that's, much more that's, money that's, to Because you have correct. more capital to spend. That's a great point. The pro- that, sounds the pro- great. that sounds really good in theory, but how many times has that actually worked? And it worked with Patrick Mahomes. Uh, that's one. That was, <laughs> that's one. That's it, one. It's worked, but they already it's had a playoff hold team. On, just hold on. They worked with Patrick Mahomes. It worked with Baltimore. The Ravens uh, got very Ravens far did, with went, Lamar. Went really yep. far. It worked with Tom Brady. They didn't for, win it, the Super Bowl. It worked with Tom Brady for a thousand years in New England. It works all the time. Tom Brady was on a really good team. And, Tom Brady was no, not, but that's the point, Jamal. You, you can build you, a really you, good team you, you if the quarterbacks own, on a rookie if deal. You, it takes time to build all these guys up because the moment they all get this, just what just happened to Philadelphia, your cupboard is not bare, but you lose a lot of guys the moment that you start having to pay your quarterback so I guess, and some other guys. Jamal, just to wrap this up, because we're a little bit over. So I guess your point you're trying to make is build the, the team Giants first. Aren't ready for the quarterback yet? Not, build the team yet. and then add the quarterback later. Not yet. And then hold on, just one one last. No, that's point. okay. Go ahead. You're fine. Because I know I know a lot of fans can't stand Daniel Jones, and and I, and that's fair. If you don't like him, that's your prerogative. But to evaluate a quarterback and not 
and, and exclude the team is crazy to me. For 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 Joe Shane right and about Brian that. Dable, for Joe Shane and Brian Dable to evaluate this quarterback on the team that he was playing with and say, you know what, we can win with this guy. And before he can even do anything, gets hurt, everybody around him gets hurt and say, you know what, he's horrible. We need our guy. <laughs> That's crazy to me. No, Jamal, look, I, I, I understand – and I think you can believe both these things at the same time, right? I guess my response would be you don't feel – and, again, I'm very open to picking a wide receiver. They're going to pick Malik Ambers or Roma Dunze or Marvin mm-hmm. Anderson Jr. I'm going to be a very happy camper. So so I'm, 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 I'm all good with that. But I think the theory, and I'll play devil's advocate to you, is mm-hmm. you hope even if you don't draft a quarterback this year that you're going to be closer to 500, maybe over, and you're going to be picking somewhere between 19 and 20. And then your better team, to your point, your your team then looks more prepared to accept a quarterback into its loving embrace. Mm-hmm. So you can put together a complete team with a quarterback. Where are you getting that quarterback? Well, I've seen the Eagles move up what twice in the draft. So I, I don't I'm, I don't really subscribe to this. Oh, you have to do this. You have to do that. You can have the twenty fifth pick if you see your guy. Go get them. And look at what San Francisco did. They had a really good team, right? So they said, you know what, we want to get our guy. Even though they missed, they they threw whatever asset they had to get their guy. And it didn't hurt them. You know why it didn't hurt them? It hurt them. They had a really good team. That Trey Lance trade hurt them. They were just able to overcome it. (laughs) How? Is Brock Purdy a top 10 quarterback? Yeah, they fell ass backwards into the last pick in the draft. But but I'm saying no. I'm not saying he's not a good quarterback. I'm saying that's a that's still. Oh no no no! Really I no 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 no! no, no, yeah, no Jamal, I agree. I'm not saying he's not a good player either. And I'm not making fun of Brock it's, Purdy. It's, but look, if they thought Brock Purdy was that good, they would have picked him in the fifth j- round. Just remember, I'm telling you this. No no no! My my I, I, argument I, no, no, is I, they I thought he was a quarterback, but the team was so good yeah, so, that it didn't hurt him. So so I'll make it easier for you. I've got your argument. Your argument is you should build your team first, get a good team, and then you can try to fit the quarterback in. And not every team is trying to do that, including the Giants. The problem with what your argument is, is that as you try to evaluate a quarterback and they're hit or miss, right, Mm -hmm. and you don't really know and you're hoping that this guy's going to be great and you're pulling for this guy to be great and he's not really that great at the end of the day, that's one position. Multiply that by every position when you're trying to draft. When you're trying to put a team together, you're hoping that these guys that you draft, and like there are guys on this team I love to death. That's fair. Right? And they, they did they're not performing. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. So you can't you, you can't say like their teams aren't trying to build teams. Some some No, that's not what I'm saying. I, 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 all I hear I, is people say get yeah, the quarterback don't, first, don't, get don't, the don't quarterback don't worry about first. Like, you, like, you, you, you know what the, you know what everybody's trying to do. Everybody's trying to get the best draft they have. We all have a great draft class. Thank you, Jamal. Once appreciate a year. The appreciate the call. We'll have a draft great draft class one year, an average one one year. A great, great one. And, like, that's better than it used to be. We used to have a great draft class once every 10 years. Right. Right, right. Now, I don't know that had a function of the players that were out there or, or what or who you were evaluating or talent needed or whatever, but it's hard to put together a team and, and think that they're going to be the guys that you that you sign them for. The guy you see on film, when he gets to you, he's a few months older. <laughs> he just right. is. Right. Like, and you see guys – their expiration date picks up a little earlier and earlier. So I understand what he's saying. He's right. You need to build a team. But if you're evaluating a quarterback to be your draft pick and he's one player and you miss on him, imagine missing on a bunch of guys. Yeah, and look, and I'll I'll just say this before we wrap here. It is easy to get stuck in that 8-10 to win area and you can't figure a way out of it. Look at what just happened to the Vikings with Kirk Cousins. They've been languishing in that 9 win area forever and they eventually just say, look, we can't take the next step by paying Kirk, to your point with the yeah. quarterback contracts, right? We can't pay him $45 million because we can't build a good enough team around him to win. Well, so it, it becomes more difficult then, and you get stuck in that land of mediocrity, mm-hmm. and it's not as easy, Jamal, as you make it out to be. Oh, well, if there's a guy you like, just trade up and you go and get him. Well, maybe the team doesn't want to trade out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, Which means it costs you more. Correct, or you just can't get him at all, and, and you can't and acquire and Jamal, the player. And Jamal wasn't saying, the guy before Jamal probably said that. So here, here's, here would be my last thing. Yes. And and this we can go we can get off. But yes, sorry, Brian Dable and those guys won, won you know got into the playoffs and won a playoff game. and won a playoff game. Mm-hmm. 
they had so many one loss games that they, one one score games that they won. The same amount of one score games they won the year before, they lost them. They did in the following year. They flipped. It wasn't a complete flip, but it was close. It's very close. Yes. Very close. Like it was like so many games. The the Jets game, the the Bills game, the you, you just just kept tapping them and like they were yeah. just one score, mm-hmm. one play here, one play there, different sto- different scenario. All of a sudden, the Giants are in the playoffs again. That's that that's not a big variable right there. So that's nine to ten wins either way, both years in a row. You got to figure out how to get past that moment, how to make those one score games, two score games, into positive. And if you keep people healthy first. You have more wins. And I think to Howard, and Howard, I'm going to go back to what you said about 10 minutes ago, and then we'll say goodbye. You should just pick the best player. Yeah. And that's what you do. If because you, if you, you can pick a quarterback at six, and it's just a guy and not the guy, then you're stuck in the land that Jamal's talking about. Mm-hmm. That, that you don't want to be in, right? So that's why, the evalu- to me, the evaluation of Daniel Jones is irrelevant in all this. It's just a matter of how good you think the quarterback is. If you think the quarterback can be special, by all means, pull the trigger. If you don't think the quarterback is going to be special, then take the player you do think is going to be special at a different position. Yeah. And that's kind of the way I look at it. I like the kids that come out. I like the kids that are coming out of quarterback. I appreciate all of them, but I don't think any of them could play behind the team if we don't have a team to, for them to play behind. No, that's true too. That's it. And <laughs> especially if you have to go and move up to get one of these guys and you're trading other picks, then you can't fill out the rest of the, your roster too. It makes it even harder. There was a famous NFL commercial at one time when Carr was a quarterback at the Texans. And he was like, yep, you get the number one pick in the draft and, you're, and your season's supposed to look great. And he's standing there taking a snap from nobody. There's no one in front of him. I'll always remember that. <laughs> and there's a reason they got sacked as many times as they did. Howard, this was fun, brother. All right, brother. Good seeing you, man. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. It should be Lance and I. If Lance is back on the men, I'm trying to get someone from Michigan. I'll send some more texts when this show is done. Uh, we'll be on talking Big Blue football with you right here on Big Blue Kickoff Live on Wednesday at 1230. Uh, it's all brought to you by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle to New York football giants. For Howard Cross, I'm John Schmuck. We'll see you next time, everybody. Turns out a delightfully clean home can make for a delightful start to the day. At Mrs. Myers, everything they make is inspired by the garden. With plant-derived and other thoughtfully chosen ingredients, their cleaning products smell like a dream and work like the Dickens, leaving your home sparkly clean and your to-do list tackled in no time. Goodness, there's no better feeling than that. Mrs. Myers, rooted in goodness. Visit MrsMyers.com today. Tired of restless nights? At Lisa, we know good sleep is essential for mental, physical, and emotional health. From memory foam mattresses to hybrids that keep you cool all night long, Lisa's mattresses offer exceptional comfort and support with free delivery and 100 nights to try out your mattress in the comfort of your home. For a limited time, save up to $700 off select mattresses plus two free pillows. Go to lisa.com slash iHeart for an additional $50 off mattresses and select goods. Exclusions apply. See lisa.com for more details.